Hello and welcome back to episode 10 of the Welsh Premiership podcast. Um, today we're joined by uh, Edward Vale coach, former Cross Keys coach Greg Woods. Greg, how are you? How are you yeah, good on? lads. Um, surviving lockdown, so everyone's safe and well, so it's good. Um, with the news announced today that we're going into this um, 17 day circuit breaker lockdown, um, did you get um, any chance to get back with the boys or? When do you expect to be back with them now? No, we uh, we haven't been back yet. Um, we just had the regular contact, really, from phone calls, Zoom, house party, um, the sort of usual stuff the sports teams have done, you know, through lockdown, um, especially with the local authority lockdowns, you know, travel restrictions, etc. You know, we were planning to try to get back together, but every time you plan something, it seems the next thing comes in its way, really. So we haven't been we haven't been together. Um, but like I said, we've had regular contact and meetings and, and planning. We'll be the best best prepared team ever because the amount of meetings that we've had and uh, time talking about it, you know, we'll, uh, we'll certainly be organised. So, Greg, you finished the season in 11th place. What did you make of it as a whole? Yeah, it was a tough year. Uh, we probably had uh, an inkling that it was going to be tough at the start of it, you know, that we went through a, a big... Uh, Transferring squad really, uh, we had to be more sustainable and live within our means. Uh, we felt that you know we would have enough to survive. You know we felt that all the way through, uh, but we certainly knew that we wouldn't be challenging at the top. Um, you know on that. So the first half of the year was really tough. You know and and and, and lots of boys had the lessons how hard the Premiership can be. You know it's fine you know getting yourself up for one game, but when you've got to do it week in week out against really good opposition. You know, it's a different kettle of fish. And, uh, you know, post-Christmas, you know, we added to our squad. We brought some boys in to, to, to reinforce us. And, you know, we finished the season with, you know, wins against RGC, Ponty at home, a draw in Carmarthen away. You know, I, I felt pretty confident that we would do enough to survive. And, you know, when the, when the stop happened on the season, you know, we were eight points clear, game in hand, and Bridgend only had four games to go. So, you know, like I said, we, we wasn't 100% safe, but... Uh, I only felt we probably needed to win one more game out those last five to, to survive. So, real tough year. I think for the boys who experienced the Premiership for the first time, they'll be better for it uh, and understand the demands, you know, of that. And as a club as a whole, we were really pleased with what we'd done because, you know, we had to be more sustainable. We had to make sure we could balance the books. And, you know, we certainly done that. So, you know, it only, it only, we can only improve and, and we've got to climb the table next year. You mentioned those uh, five games and beaten run towards the end of the season. Uh, how important was that for you? So obviously, before those five games, what was the what was the atmosphere in the squad? I, you know, I I not afraid to admit this. I've been in many relegation battles in the Premiership, and uh, you know, I, right from the off, I knew we were in one. You know, so you know, we had to make sure we were quite competitive. And you know, we had a bad day in the cup on the telly in front of everyone. You know, against Cardiff away, but apart from that, we were pretty competitive. You know, and getting bonus points and all that is is, is massively uh, important in those fights. And you know, to, to have two big wins against Ponty and RGC, which is you know no mean feat, and then to draw in Carmarthen, which I thought we were unlucky. You know, I felt you know one or two more decisions in the last ten minutes. You know, we might have snuck a win. So you know, I like I said, you know, we we were geared up for the relegation fight, and I felt we were in the right space mentally for it. You know, it wasn't creeping up on us. You know, and we talked about this long race and. We were coming right to the end of it, you know, and like I said, one more win. I felt we would have probably have enough points in the bag to see it through. And the aim was never to go to the bridge end to have it that game to play. So, you know, we want to get it done the week before in Swansea away. Um, and like I said, and take it out their hands really. So, you know, but like I said, you know, it's um, different challenges to the other couple of years I've had at Manebo, where, you know, we got off to a flyer the year before and we were challenging and making semi finals and cups, etc. But you know, that's part in life of being a Premiership coach, really. It's a, it's a tough and uncompromising league, really. And obviously, you was in that relegation battle this year, but looking towards next year when the season does go ahead, what's the plans? Yeah, we, we've got to climb the table and we've got to be competitive. And, uh, you know, we've been, you know, our squad is a lot more, I would say, ready for Premiership rugby next year. You know, um, you know, we were really happy with our recruitment around Christmas. We brought some reinforcement in, you know, that I felt would, would be enough to win games. Um, and we just added to that the summer now. So, you know, we're, we're really comfortable. We're probably on paper, which means nothing, but on paper, we've got a real strong squad. 
you know, ready, ready to play. Uh, and it's, it's lots of changes, you know. We've got a brand new captain. Probably the core of that title-winning team have gone from Ebu uh, now. And, and it's time for that new squad to create their own memories, really, and, and add those positive experiences. So we've also recruited a couple of coaches off the field to help myself and Lewis, uh, you know, especially around the conditioning and uh, the performance side. You know, so like I said, we're, we're, we're in a great position, you know, and we get to the season was ending. We were really looking forward to the Scottish um, competition, you know, the border. We felt that was a fresh start for us, you know, that we could we could go there and start building momentum ready for next year. You know, but like I said, whenever we start again, we're, we're in a good position. And you mentioned your recruitment for next year as well. Uh, the big name signing is Will Sem star Davis Smith. So how important do you think he'll be for you? Yeah, that's that, that something that we chased, uh, for, you know, for, for a long period of time. You know, it's a couple of other good signings I think you should keep an eye out for. And, you know, Alex Gray and Scott Parsons and Ethan Dahl in the back row, you know, they, you know they're going to they're gonna be really impressive, I think, in, you know, ideal for us, you know, currently. So, you know, we bought six or seven boys in uh, to add to the ones that we retain now. Um, we, we've only lost really one or two from last year that decided to move on, which is, which is great for us because of the massive upheaval we've had over the last sort of 18 months prior. You know, so like I said, yeah, the new sign's got to come in and they've got to work hard to win the shirt. And, and like I said, we, we could put a real decent team out on paper, but that means nothing in the Prem. So we've got to make sure that they're in a position to play. And your captain, Ashley Sweet, has left the club after a long spell there. How important has he been there? And what are the qualities of your new captain, Joe Franchi? Yeah, Ash is, uh, I, I remember coaching Ash as an 18 year when he came to Cross Keys and, uh, you know, he's formed a fantastic uh, career, really, in the Premiership. Probably the the number one line-out operator, really, you know, um, throughout that 15-year period. And he wanted a new challenge. He felt it was the only time now that if he wanted to move on before he probably gets too old. Um, you know, and like I said, it, it wasn't a new broom type of thing. But if it was time to leave, it was probably now, you know, because we've got a fresh start and we're, we're trying to build a, a new squad uh, for the next three to four years. You know, and I can't speak highly enough of Ashley. He he led us in a real tough period for the club. He's one of the players that stayed, you know, and and you know, especially in the wins at home against Pont in RDC. You know, if anyone was questioning his attitude towards the club, we'd only have to watch those performances. And, you know, he's a captain that probably leads by action and, and words, you know, and he, he was a fine second operator. So I wish him all the best. And and like I said, I I've, I've known Ashley for a long time in his career and uh you know, I only wish him well in uh, in his new club. Uh, picking a new captain was difficult. You know, it was uh, it's always hard, and especially when you're forming a new squad. Uh, but Joe Franchi's always been someone since I've been at the club for the last three years that I've been massively impressed with. Uh, not just his physicality and contact on the field, which he's just a dynamite, really. Uh, you know, on that, I just like the way that he conducts himself and talks to the board and the chairman and, and brings players... Um, issues and opportunities that he feels that we can build as a squad, you know, the way that he conducts himself. He was the right man to, you know, to, to do one of the best phone calls I made in lockdown, really, was that call to him and asking him, would he want to captain his own town club? And, you know, that, that didn't take very long. So, you know, and, you know, I certainly know we've got the right person to do that for the next, for the next couple of seasons. Uh, so moving on to yourself now, how did your coaching career begin? Obviously played at uh, Cardiff where before regional rugby, uh, had an injury uh, and I went back to play for Cross Keys, my local team, uh, in the first year of the Premiership in 2003. Uh, I didn't really recover from the injury, so just as fate happens, like any coaches really, lots of coaches left and I'd done the old classic route of going to UEC, getting sports degree, uh, thinking you were in Gatland in your first year, that type of attitude and, you know, I, I just fell into a, a position really and I was lucky I, I went at the club that got a rich history in developing people and coaches and, you know, they were fantastic really. So I started coaching in 2004. So I've been at the Premiership a long time, um, probably in a head coach position since 2007. You know, so I've seen lots of things. I've seen everything in the Premiership from five, uh, set, six point tries, uh, relegation, non-relegation, East-West. You know, I've seen lots of changes. And um, like I said, I... I only because is the highest 
body to that. The, um, is the highest sort of level of club competition in Wales, you know, and that rivalry and and that sort of culture within that we got is that is that club game. So, you know, it's been fantastic for me to to work in in that league. And like I said, I, I've been there a long time, and you know, I felt it was the right time for them and me to make that change. You know, and luckily, I went to another big Gwent traditional club in 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 Ebervale. So I've only coached in Gwent, so you know, I I'm got experience of coaching anywhere else, but. You know, like I said, that's, I, I think this will be my seventh season next year whenever we start. You know, so you know, I you know, I bank on that experience really, and, and like I said, I I felt that helped us last year. You know, that people remember the great teams that we had at Keys and going to multiple finals and stuff like that. But we had some bad years as well. You know, and you know, we had to win last games of the season to stay up, etc. And you know, I just felt that experience that I put with a young squad last year probably helped us steer us through some some challenging times really. Uh, only, only, only positive memories, and um, you know, they, you know, it's great to see them now. They probably, you know, they've had a r- rough couple of years as well, and and now Morgan heading them up, you know, with some great people around him, you know, fantastic to see. So, you know, and yeah, it was emotional, but like I said, it was the right time for them. It's probably the right time for me to change. It's a long time being at somewhere, um, even though that we had, you know, I always have quite a high turnover of assistant coaches and different people to work with to keep you fresh. You know, I just felt it was the right time and. You know, whenever they were on the lookout for a coach, um, and like you said, they they probably got, went through a transitional period as well when I took over because, you know, they they were a very successful team that won the league, you know, and and the turnover of players and and, and balancing the books, etc. You know, like I said, I thought it was a good fit that you know I could start you know and, and create my own little stamp up there as well. Yeah, have you got any standout memories from your coaching career? Yeah, you always remember the losses, <laughs> you know. So, <laughs> So, um, you know, but yeah, I, I think that our our journey to the British Irish Cup final with Keys was pretty special with a group of players um, that we were just tough to beat, you know, and you could put any quality players and we played some quality players that year against teams against us. You know, we, we were tough to beat that. You know, the Cup final wins and the Premiership final appearances are very good, you know, but, you know, there's nothing better sometimes when you see a team stack with regional players come to your ground you know, when you turn them over, you know, uh, you know, with part-time players and brick players, etc. And, you know, that's the motivation, really. And, you know, like I said, you know, it's too many good memories, really. But like I said, you know, there's some bad losses along the way as well. And obviously, you're employed by WIU. Can you tell us a bit about your um, your role with them and how that fits in with your, with your coaching? Yeah, it's totally separate, really. I, I've always worked outside of rugby coaching, so... You know, I used to be in community development and regeneration. Um, I was fortunate to, to come into the, to the Welsh Rugby Union a few years back. Uh, I look after everything really outside of 15 sides. So I work with our partners, our alternative game, uh, making our game as inclusive as possible and to reach as many people as possible. You know, you've probably seen a couple of straplings that we have, a jersey for all. You know, and if I had to explain to people, it's probably my job to, to make sure that it is a jersey for all, you know, and, and it's hard and it's tough, you know, but like I said, it's really rewarding. Uh, totally different, you know, there's no professional uh, coaching or anything like that. That's my, you know, that's my hobby. That's my, you know, that's what I do on a Tuesday, Thursday and any other spare time that, you know, that I have. So, you know, you know, I'm very lucky to work in rugby, you know, but I would say that, you know, the, the two worlds are a little bit different, um, you know, on that. So, you know, I also coach and help, you know, coach my youngest boys play. You know, they all, they both play mini rugby as well. So our weekends, well, before COVID, we were very busy. Yeah. Uh, you know, Saturday, Sunday, we're always, our, you know, out, out on games. And we'd always hope for three wins in the house, you know, on, on a weekend. Yeah. You know, and some weekends is no wins. And, you know, that's tough for the misses then. So, you know, um, you know, but like I said, yeah, I work for the union. Very, very fortunate. And like I said, we, all of us can't wait for rugby to return. So, um, yeah, as someone who's coached in the Premiership for a long time, uh, what are your thoughts on the standard of the league? Yeah, I, 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 always, I always feel that massive support of it, really, because you know, it was the highest competition in Gwent, uh, sorry, the highest competition in Wales for, for clubs. Uh, it's really well, you know, supported. You know, you've got some clubs that have some huge followings, etc. And, you know, I always a big believer that, you know, a competition structure will help any developing player. So going to Sardis Road on a on a TV game with big crowd there, etc. That will only benefit uh, the next regional international player. And I've seen hundreds of international players come through the system. You know, 
training full time with a pro team, I get that because of their conditioning, you know, but the element of playing week in, week out with a bit of jeopardy on it, et cetera, win losses is important, et cetera. I think that only aids the, the you know, the play development. But, you know, like I said, we all got a, we all got a duty to make it better. So the players, coaches, you know, the clubs, so the product's got to be correct, you know, but like I said, you know, massive supporter for it. And uh, like I said, when it returns, hopefully you'll come back even better. Yeah, and there's been some big changes in the Premiership over the past few years. There's been uh, 16 teams down to 12 teams. There's been the whole six-point try thing. Do you think we've finally got the right structure now? 12 teams, one up, one down. Yeah, like, you know, like I said, I've been here since 2004. So, I, you know, I, I, I've probably seen every system and every every structure on it. And and like I said, we're always trying to find the right balance, you know, you know, as, as a league. Um, but you know, I do like the home and away. I do like jeopardy on it. You know, I you know I think everyone's going to be playing for something. You know, and it's certainly you know that that's important. Um, and obviously, some teams desperate to be in it as well, and they'll add real value. You know, when 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 they get up. So, you know, like I said, you know things change, and you know we always try different things. But you know, for me, home and away, you know that you know and jeopardy on it. That you know that's perfect. And to finish, Greg, we got a teammates and a player quiz for you. So all the players you played with and players you've coached, who's the worst dressed? Oh, it's hundreds of them. Uh, <laughs> you've got a few in there, the skinny jeans and no socks with the boat shoes. Uh, <laughs> and they got the little, you know, got the little brother's uh, T-shirts on as well. So it's hundreds of them. But, uh, no, you're putting me under the spot, but I would say he's been as a players like that. And who's the best drink you've seen? It was uh, very good. Um, it's been a good couple of candidates here. Lloyd Burns is very good, excellent player, but also a really good tourist. Um, you know, he was superb. Um, you know, some some. You know, I would say one of the Westwood really who coached me a lot across skis. He, you know, he could give people a good run for their money. As well. so, you know, you know, I'd probably say him. And who's the biggest liability on a night out? Oh, uh, <laughs> I'll have to use my discretion here. I think uh, all players are extremely well behaved. And <laughs> really, yeah. Good answer. <laughs> well, who's the best changing room DJ you've seen? Oh, that's a good question. Uh, I never used to allow music in, tra- in, in dressing rooms, so I have changed. So when I started coaching, I never used to allow it. used to... Uh, you know, you know, my head in really, and uh, but you know, I got to change with the times as well. So Joe Franchi in charge of the music with us, so he has a playlist, and you see him all on Spotify, etc. Um, you know, but like I said, uh, he's the only one that probably has done the playlist for me since I've been coaching. And if you'd be stuck on a desert island, who's the player you most want to be stuck with, and the one you'd least want to be stuck with? Cool, good question. Uh, the current lot they got up in up in Ebu. Um, I'd probably say uh, to be stuck with uh, Rob Sevenoaks because uh, he's a butcher, so he could probably get us some meat and uh, 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 to eat. Um, least stuck with obviously is Paul King, uh, so he's a social hand grenade really. So he probably upset people on a desert island. So you know, I think they'd be two good candidates. All right, then that's the end of episode ten. Cheers for coming on, Greg. No problem, lads. Nice to speak to you. Cheers. Just a quick. One. Word on um, Ebervale, they've been raising money for Hospice, Hospice of the Valleys. Um, I'm going to chuck the link for their crowdfunding page uh, in the uh, description and on our Twitter as well. Uh, see you next time. Bye bye.